Christmas as per tradition. Every December 25th on Christmas, Ruby uh, releases a new version. So this year we get Ruby 3.3.0, um, and I'm going to walk through some of the new stuff in there. So first off uh, is Prism Parser as a default gem. So this is something that Kevin Newton's been working heavily on. You can follow him on his blog. He just gave a talk at RubyConf about this as well, um, and it's probably linked in here somewhere. But he's been building uh, Prism and all kinds of interesting, cool stuff has been going on with that. Um, but I wanna show you that real quick. So here I have Ruby 3.3. We can open up IRB, we can require Prism, and Prism is able to parse any Ruby code that we give it. So as a string, we can say, let's have a little Ruby program that says Merry Christmas, um, exclamation mark, and a Christmas tree emoji, and let's actually have a syntax error. We're missing the ending single quote. So if we run this, it is able to understand that, oh, you know, you had an error. You expected a closing delimiter for the string literal, uh, so it includes the errors that Ruby would have uh, detected when it tried to run the program. Um, it can find content, it can find, you know, the data section of the file, magic comments, uh, basically keeps track of the full source code and then breaks it down under value. So you can see this is a program. There are statements in there. We just have one statement. Uh, it is a method call and it calls the method name puts and it has one argument down here which is a string and it is Merry Christmas. And it can tell you as well that it starts with a single character or single quote and it's missing the ending single quote, but it can tell you exactly where the string is defined. So this is um, opening on line one, uh, column five. So puts, it has one, two, three, four characters, space, and then our string begins, and it ends at character 27. Uh, but this is, of course, invalid syntax, so we can fix that by running it with the correct syntax for the closing quote. We no longer have any errors, and this gives us the full string and the single quote at the end and everything now. So why would you want a parser like this? Well, of course, Ruby itself needs to be able to parse the language and the uh, syntax and all of that. So this is something important for just Ruby to be run in general. But what's cool about this is you can parse Ruby with Ruby, which means that you could write a Visual Studio Code plugin like Shopify has been doing in order to interpret the Ruby code that it is rendering and show you here are you know the constants and the method calls and the method definitions, um, other things like that. And then it can actually analyze those and say, hey, this constant is loaded. Uh, and it has these attributes on it and these method names and whatever else. So it can give you a lot of context around that, which is super cool. So um, Prism is in active development, working really great, and is now included by default in Ruby, which is great. Um, so there was the previous library called Ripper that would do this same sort of stuff, um, but this is going to supersede that basically. Uh, and what's cool is it's a C library that it can be used, uh, that will be used internally in Ruby itself, but it's also a Ruby gem, so you can use it like we just did right here in IRB. Um, it can parse source code, it can parse comments out, you can check and see is this valid Ruby source code or not, um, and that is uh, pretty much it. So there's a bunch you can dig into more in depth. Um, you can also tell Ruby itself to use the Prism parser with one of these flags. Um, it's experimental, but I think the plan is to use that as the, the default eventually when it's all well tested and battle hardened. Um, use LaRam instead of Bison. I'm not super familiar on this, so I can't dig too much into it, but YJIT has made some big improvements over Ruby 3.2, which is super exciting, because Ruby 3.2, uh, running YJIT in production, many places like Shopify and Basecamp have talked about, uh, YJIT has hugely improved our um, applications in production, so that's super awesome. So they've added a whole bunch of support for things. Uh, these are great, so the Rails, uh, helpers like blank and present are now inline, so they'll be faster. They don't have to make a method call. They can actually be like run right where it's called when it's um, 
when it basically is compiling that down. So that is super handy. Uh, it removes the method call, which is a little bit of overhead, so it can just put the code, which is short enough, right in place. It might take up a little bit extra memory, but it is a tiny amount compared to the speed improvement that you'll get in production, so that's awesome. Um, it's wild that it's three times faster in OptCaret, which OptCaret, if you aren't familiar, is a Nest emulator that's written in Ruby. So this is a super cool little project. Um, they use it kind of as a benchmark, but you can also use it to emulate Nest games if you want. Um, but it's also an awesome little project just for benchmarking this kind of stuff and seeing how things have improved over time. Uh, memory usage has been improved, which is excellent. Uh, <clears throat> code GC is now disabled by default, so that's interesting. Um, so no sudden drops in for performance due to code uh, garbage collection, which is awesome. Better copy on write pr uh, behavior on servers, reforking with Pitchfork, which is another project from Shopify. Uh, I haven't used this yet, but it is a rack server for shared nothing architecture. I'll have to check that out at some point. Uh, so it's similar to Unicorn. We've Most of us have uh, moved to using Puma because that's now the Rails default, but Unicorn kind of was the default uh, for production before Puma was uh, built into the Rails gem file. So you can um, enable the widget at runtime. So if you want to make this dynamic uh, or anything, you can have this method call which will enable it, uh, which is cool. So Rails 7.2, which is the next version of Rails, currently in main, will enable widget by default, which is awesome. Um, we can also use Ruby dash dash widget. Uh, well, let's run Ruby dash H and I'll show you. So you can use dash dash widget to enable the widget um, from the command line. And there's also like an environment variable, which is like Ruby widget. Um, we'll have to look this up. The environment variable. Do, 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 do. Yeah, Ruby widget enable, and that's what it is. So you can use this and then say, like if we do, oops, gotta set that to a true or something. When you do that, you will see when you run Ruby dash V that plus widget is um, on there. And so that's one way you can confirm that widget uh, is enabled. So if you want to run widget in production on Hatchbox, Heroku, Fly, Render, etc., you can set this environment variable, set it to some value like one, and that will enable widget in production so you can use that. So that's pretty handy. Um, so that's going to be something that will be on by default in Rails 7.2. You might as well use it in Rails 7.1 if you're going to be running Ruby 3 at the very least. Uh, previously, YJIT wasn't recommended for Rails apps, but now it will be. So that is a huge leap forward, which is awesome. Um, you can also see YJIT stats, which is exciting. So uh, do, 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 do. this is enabled. So I guess you can call or access this somehow. I'm not sure where, maybe on the YJIT constant or something. Um, but you'll be able to access those stats, which is cool. Uh, if you need to, you know, graph them out or anything in your logging in production, that will be handy for that. There's also this Ruby, pure Ruby JIT as well, which is an experiment. But one of the benefits of this is it wouldn't require a C compiler. So this is a JIT that can compile your Ruby code for performance, but it doesn't actually require anything extra. So like similar to the MySQL 2 gem, you had to compile the MySQL 2 gem against your MySQL C headers and you needed a C compiler. Trilogy, the new adapter for MySQL that Shopify has been working on, um, Trilogy can just uh, compile, or it doesn't need to be compiled at all, it's just all written in Ruby and can access everything there. Uh, there's also an MN thread scheduler, which I haven't really read up much on, but M Ruby threads are managed by N native threads, operating system threads, so the thread creation and management costs are reduced. 
sounds like a cool thing. Um, I'm not super familiar on all this yet. Uh, so someone else can probably talk more about this and the benefits and the you know purpose of how they intend to use that. But we've also got a whole bunch of other Ruby performance improvements. Oh, I forgot to mention um, Rails at Scale is a blog that uh, you can read up more on Ruby 3.3's YJIT, uh, how they achieved it to be faster and less memory uh, required to run it, which is awesome. And you can see across you know, the different gems that they've tested, uh, like Active Record and uh, what else do we use all the time? Ma the Mail Gem or even Ruby LSP, uh, which is awesome. So. Yeah, looking very, very good. Um, so give this a read as well. And this, we'll talk about that in just a minute, but there are a bunch of other little uh, performance improvements. So there's object shapes, which is an internal thing inside of Ruby to help make things like defined instance variable. Uh, if we want to check if an instance variable is defined, this is an internal thing that they've done to improve that. Um, so name resolution can now be interrupted. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, several performance improvements to the garbage collector. So when you're running Ruby code, like we were just doing with the Merry Christmas string, it has to basically allocate that Merry Christmas string in memory, give it to the puts method. And then once it's done, that string is no longer being used anywhere. And Ruby knows that. So the garbage collector will wait and periodically say, oh, Memory, Merry Christmas string, nobody's using that anymore, let's get rid of it. Um, and the garbage collector is a big uh, thing that can run and then if it has to do a bunch of work, it can kind of cause a performance um, dip while it needs to go do a bunch of stuff and your regular program, like your Rails server, needs to continue running um, on the side. So these are all welcome for that as well for production. Um, IRB has been getting some awesome improvements as well. I'm super excited about all these things. You can read up on them also at the Rails at Scale um, blog from Shopify. Uh, Stan Lowe uh, is awesome. We got to meet him at RubyConf this year, and he's been working on IRB and the debug gems and stuff. And so now you can access uh, Ruby debug from your binding.break or debuggers or binding IRB sessions. Uh, better auto completion, a whole bunch of other stuff as well. Who's trying to make the Ruby debugging experience even better than it is? And IRB um, is alone amazing. And then binding IRB, being able to jump into a little debugging session in the middle of your program has been great, but it's just getting better and better. So it's going to make life easier for us. Um, some other stuff, they're going to add this it uh, feature into Ruby. So when you have a block without arguments, um, this is going to be the first block parameter now. So if you have something like, <clears throat> let's do IRB, um, let's do something like, yeah, let's say put it. So we should be able to say x.call, hey, and well, let's see, a warning, it calls without arguments will refer to the first block parameter Ruby 3.4, use it or self.it. So maybe we need to say self.it here. And uh, wrong number of arguments. Maybe we have to just do a block. Uh, not entirely sure here. So we'll have to take a look at that example and see. I haven't played with this yet, but it's a cool concept that, you know, instead of doing this old version where you have the underscore uh, in numbers to reference the parameters that are given to a method, instead you can use it uh, as a reference to that. So it kind of just is a default variable name that is available. And now I know this is going to cause issues with test suites because it tends to be a um, generic name to reference the subject of your tests or whatever. So that's going to be interesting, but it is, um, basically been, I think it's been officially added or whatever. So it will be there in Ruby three, four. 
uh, when that comes out. So they've got some stuff built in to basically warn you now with deprecation saying, hey, this is going to change in the next uh, version. So be careful if you're using it today for some other reason, um, because then it will break when you upgrade Ruby versions in the future. Um, one environment variable has been removed, no big deal. And then the extension read line, which we used to have to compile the read line extension with C extensions, now is going to be using Reline in Ruby, and it's officially retired now. It's been built, uh, Reline's been in there since uh, previous Ruby version, maybe 3.0 or something. Um, and it used to be that we had to, if you're on Linux or whatever, you had to install libreadline so that Ruby could even be compiled. That is no longer required for Ruby 3.3. Um, so yeah, uh, same thing as kind of before. If you require the following gems without adding them to the gem file or gem spec, um, Bundler and Ruby gems are gonna warn you about these. These are the built-in libraries that uh, are in there. Um, and so that's basically to help compatibility with Bootsnap to speed up booting up your Ruby um, gems and requirements and all that good stuff. So that is it for all of this. If you are um, an ASDF user and ASDF Ruby has not completely added this quite yet, but you can say ASDF Ruby build version equals master. This will override the version of Ruby build that ASDF's Ruby plugin will use. By default, it's set to a specific version, and then you can override that with this environment variable, so you can install Ruby 3.3.0 before ASDF has been updated for it. So that is it. Then you can use Ruby 3.3 uh, in development, run it through your test suite and CI, and then hopefully be able to deploy this in production this week and just get those free performance improvements in your production application. And make sure to enable YJIT in your Rails apps now so that you can take advantage of all those awesome uh, speed improvements. So that is it for this episode. Merry Christmas. Hope you guys have a happy new year and everything. And I will talk to you guys in 2024. Thanks. Bye.